t-shirt printing, I wanted to show you how to prep the files properly. Um, so once you've got your photograph, um, as I do here on the screen, um, you're going to want to isolate just your head and um, knock out as much of the background as possible. Uh, I already did that to save a bit of time. You guys should all be uh, fluent enough in Photoshop to deal with that. So we're just going to kind of bypass things and pick up where um, we need to. So here's my uh, wonderful head on a white background. I've kind of feathered the edge around here on the neck. Um, the first thing we're going to do once you guys have it to that point is go to uh, image mode and then grayscale it. Um, it's going to ask you if you want to flatten it. Go ahead and say yep. And then from here, what we're going to want to do is resize it. Now, we want everybody's face to be roughly the same size. Obviously, um, you might have a big fat head like me, and so the ratio is going to be a little different. But what we're going to be concerned about is the width, um, primarily uh, the platen, the area that the shirt goes on on the screen press. Uh, has a maximum size. Uh, again, we'll get into that on press, but what you guys need to know um, for now is that the widest part of your image should only be 14 inches. Um, so I'm going to crop this down so we're not wasting any white space. I'm going to get it as close to in my ears as possible without it touching and cropping it off. And do another. And then I'm just going to grab, you can grab the freeform crop tool or the marquee tool. Um, choose unconstrained. This is a pretty large file, so you guys can see it's not as quick as it could be, I suppose. And then I'm going to double click that to crop it. So now we have, just so we're all on the same page, we have an image size that is uh, 15 by 24. Um, Again, we're going to want to make that no bigger than 14. So, um, I'm gonna un sorry, I'm going to click resample image and type in 14. And that's going to give us, you guys should be roughly around 22 inches uh, more or less. Um, go ahead and click OK. OK. So, then the next step, um, we can't print this as a grayscale image perfectly like this. There are equipment that can do some facsimile of it, but um, we don't have access to that. So what we want to do is turn it into a halftone, and um, that's going to give us a series of tiny class. So I won't go over too much of it here. Um, in order to get the file into a halftone, we need to select bitmap. And then we're going to leave the resolution at 300. And then you have a number of methods here. We're going to use halftone screen and click OK. OK. So this is going to give us our lines per inch. This is going to determine how large the dots are. Um, as I mentioned in class, we can print about a frequency of 45 lines per inch. However, that can be a little challenging, especially with water-based ink. It wants to dry on the screen. It's not a very fun printing experience, and for our purposes, that's kind of what we're after, uh, at least for the first project. We'll save the hard stuff for later. So we're going to have you guys put in a frequency of 15 um, and the angle at 45. 
Um, the angles, if we were layering multiple screens, would matter more, so we could avoid a more a pattern. But because we're just doing a single color, we're going to leave it at 45. There are lots of shapes to choose from. Uh, for our purposes, though, we're going to do round. And then we are going to click OK. And we're at 12.5% right now. Um, and I have an example of this printed off uh, so you can compare yours to mine. But this is approximately what it should look like. These are some exaggerated dots, but again, it's just going to make it a lot easier to print when we're on press. Um, we're not printing a large run at three shirts, um, but something with a low line per inch count like this, you could print all day without worrying about any of the ink locking up in the screen. So from here, you're going to want to save it as a PDF. Um, I'm not going to do that, but um, uh, that's what you're going to want to do. And then you're going to want to print it out on the Epson transparency printer. We'll cover that bit in class, so I'm going to leave it here for now. Thanks.